Reporting from the Water for Food Conference in Lincoln, Nebraska, I'm Marlon Bowling, and I've got Ken Schiltz with me. He's from Ogallala, Nebraska, and uh, also serves as a state senator, other than talking at the Water for Food Conference. Uh, thank you, Senator. I appreciate the time here. Hey, no problem. No problem at all, Marlon. It's great. So what did you have to do here at the conference this year? I understand you're one of the speakers that are scheduled to talk then. Right, yeah. Th- this morning we'll, uh, we'll sit down with uh, three other uh, producer uh, farmers, and I think, I think we're all into the livestock sector. And so we'll sit down. We're going to talk, uh, tell everybody a little about our operations, how they work, and what changes have happened over time as a, you know, with moisture, uh, droughts, uh, quote-unquote climate change, and whatever else, uh, whatever else, what other questions the audience might have. So we'll have about two hours to do that this afternoon or this morning. Well, you do hold a, you do have a lot of hats that you wear. And uh, being from Ogallala, you're also a farmer, um, farmer rancher. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, my family owns a farm and a, and a twenty thousand head feed yard there. And uh, for three generations now, we've we've worked. Uh, there in Keith County, and it's uh, it's been a great experience for us. A lot of hard work, but uh, one thing about a farm and a feed yard, they uh, tend to keep you busy. Well, that's one thing about the drought from 2012. I mean, that definitely affects you in a different way from a lot of the speakers here. First-hand experience there, talking about water needs there in your area. Yeah, absolutely. And and the one thing, the one thing that I learned last year is that uh, it, when you do run into a very severe severe drought. Uh, it's crippling. It um, it's like no other drought that I've ever experienced, and I don't think uh, anyone, uh, you know, unless you're been around in the 30s, would have any idea of what of what we dealt with last year. The fortunate thing is because of all the technology and everything else, as far as uh, uh, you know, being able to um, tillage equipment, tillage technology, and things like that, we've really uh, lessened the effects of that drought, and even though even though we had less rain last year than I've seen any year, we were still able to pr- produce a crop. And with the advancements in irrigation and stuff, that's what made it possible. Now, if we uh, if we see another year like last year, then uh, that brings on a whole new uh, set of problems and issues that uh, will be even tougher to deal with. How are conditions now around home at Ogallala there? You know, we've been extremely fortunate here in the last few weeks, a uh, month and a half or so. We've received some rain. Uh, we've got adequate rain, adequate moisture now to uh, get the crops out of the ground and get them going. Uh, so we're better, we're better now than we thought we would be, but we're still behind. But we're not as far behind as we were, so everybody's got a little bit of a smile on their face. So did you have to make any major changes in your planning for 2013 crop-wise this year? You know, we, uh, we did a couple things. We're, we're, we switched out to a, a few more soybeans. Um, some of that's market-driven, but uh, some of that just depends on, on when they use the water and how they use the water. But we haven't made any, any real big changes. We do have, we do have uh, seeding rates on, on certain pieces of ground where, where the irrigation water isn't as plentiful that will uh, we'll reduce the rates there to try to make up for some of that. And we've been doing that for a few years. We've also, uh, we've also incorporated you know, the, um, the water sensors uh, to measure uh, water that's in the soil and, and get some ideas on how better to manage our application of irrigation water. So how has the drought experience from last year affected your work at the legislature? Are you incorporating that into anything you do there? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, when I came into the legislature, this is my fifth year now, uh, I'd, I'd been involved in, in water issues for, gosh, approximately 20 years now. And uh, from being a member and serving on the water policy task force that came up with LB 962 and then moving forward and seeing how the drought has affected folks there. Yeah, I'm, I'm very involved in the water issues that are going on in the legislature, uh, working on uh, prioritizing what we need to do, finding a, a uh, reliable funding source to make sure that uh, as we move forward, we are managing our water to the best of our ability to give our farmers, ranchers, and everyone else in the state uh, the opportunities that they need to continue to be successful. How concerned are you about overreach by agencies like EPA and other government agencies uh, wanting to overregulate water on farm ground? Yeah, well, I think I think that that's one of the biggest issues and one of the biggest challenges that we have moving forward is the amount of regulation and the, and and who is regulating that. I mean, we just saw we just saw yesterday that uh, EPA uh, 
basically through the Freedom of Information Act, gave out a bunch of uh, private individuals' uh, contact information, including home addresses and things like that. Most of these folks uh, were livestock producers, uh, feed yard owners, operators, uh, situations such as that. And uh, I know this was a Freedom of Information Act request that was given to by oh, the uh, Earth... Defense Council, the Environmental Defense Fund, a bunch of these others. So all of that information got out. So, yeah, I'm very concerned about overreaching of the EPA and other agencies because, you know, that, that's that's one way that if you don't agree with a uh, particular industry or a particular way of doing things that uh, that you can really have a detrimental effect on. And, and we are seeing more and more regulations that aren't helping industry and, and probably not helping the consumer all that much as well. Because as we see, uh, anytime you uh, place more regulations on something, costs inevitably go up. Well, the problem is it seems like there there aren't any ramifications for them doing that. It's kind of like they're okay with just saying, "Oops, sorry about that." Yeah, and I and I, I don't disagree with you. And that that just that just points out how important elections are and understanding the people that we elect and knowing and knowing that those people and trusting that those people will do the right things when it comes to these agencies and keep uh, keep them on a leash to make sure that they don't overstep their bounds. Because as, as we've seen, if you look at EPA or any of these other organizations, what seems to happen is that you seem to have folks that are passionate about something. And, and a lot of times, a lot of times that passion spills over into activism and that activism comes into play while they're on the job, and that is just something that we have to we have to take out of the equation. Is there any recourse that farmers and producers that had their information disclosed uh, that they can take or not? You know that that's a good question. Uh, I'm not sure if there is or not, but I'm sure that there's others that are looking into that. Uh, I just think it's I, I just think it's it's abhorrent that uh, we have to deal with this kind of stuff because you know. Uh, you and I both know for a fact what that information is going to be used for, and it, it doesn't it doesn't look good from here. So hopefully there will be some recourse there. Uh, I know uh, I know Senator Johan's office is working on that, and, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to, uh, to find some way to make sure. But you know, here's the problem. Okay, the cat's already out of the bag. Now what do we do with it? Even if there is recourse, uh, the people that you probably wouldn't want to have that information already does. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for the time. I appreciate that, Senator, and I wish you all the best. Hey, thank you so much, Marlon. It's very good to speak with you. That's Senator Ken Shills from Ogallala. I'm Marlon Bowling for the Rural Radio Network.